this is one of those weeks where I just need to start working through our stash. I have a lot to say about this storage unit, but I'm gonna leave that for another time. I pulled off this little riser and it has already been base painted, I believe with raw silk by Fusion. And I'm gonna use the Natural Wonders midi size collection. This midi size is really perfect. It's three sheets and they're each about a piece of paper size. And I think they're great for so many projects. And it's nice that you don't have to open up a huge roll or a big sheet and you can just start working. And they're very affordable under $20. So I've decided, one of the things I liked about this one is it had text, and I've decided I am just gonna center the text off. I've cut a few of the elements off that I didn't feel like would work, and I am sort of lining these up, paying attention to where the feet are. And you just go about it like you do every other transfer. It's just rub it with the stick until it transfers off the plastic and onto your surface. Just like everything else in my arts and crafts world, I love to layer the transfers. So I like to use different elements like words and flowers and then potentially use them in unexpected ways or at least ways that aren't exactly how they are originally laid out. So right now I'm just gonna go ahead and cut apart each of the floral sections. Once I feel like I have enough cut out, then I'm just gonna start playing with how they would lay around the words. I do like them to overlap the words or the words to overlap them. Um, since the words are down, obviously this is gonna be the flowers overlapping the words. But I don't want it to be too perfect. And I just am looking for a good sense of balance and asymmetry. So I don't want it to be exactly the same on the right and the left or the top and the bottom. I want it to feel a little bit, um, I want it balanced. I want it to be visually pleasing, but I don't want it to look matchy-matchy. And remember when you're using these transfers, it is okay to cut off elements of the transfer and use it in a different way. This one had these little florals and leaves that were coming from one end and then we flipped it over and actually are gonna use them coming from the other direction. So you can always rethink how these work together. Uh, just be creative and use what you have available to you to fill the necessary spaces. Playing with transfers is one of the most relaxing and fun activities I do with my arts and crafts. And of course, I love adding little insects, butterflies, what have you, to mine. So I was super excited about the new MIDI Bug Whisperer. I think this is gonna be a great collage sheet or individually cut apart. In order to make this a really usable uh, tray, we wanna be sure to add a couple layers of top coat. And I'm gonna use DIY's Big Top, and I'm gonna use the blue Dixie Belle sponge. And what I love about the sponge is that it just makes this fast and easy. So I have already um, gotten the sponge damp. So got it wet and wrung out all the water. And then I'm just dipping it right into my big top and smoothing it across the top. That's all you need to do. Once each layer is dry, you wanna give it probably a good 30 to 45 minutes to dry. You'll use a 220 grit sandpaper between each layer and you'll get the perfect finish. Let me know what you think about this completed tray. I love the natural uh, soft colors of the Natural Wonders Transfer. This is the first time I've used it, but I will definitely be using it again. And those little bugs, I just adore them as just soft little um, nature bits that make the piece come alive, in my opinion. And here's a quick reminder that you can follow us on all social media at Vintage Bee Design. And we have a community in Facebook called Creating the Hive or Creative Con Vintage Bee. And I have just started this month a new coaching group. Membership is only $20 a month. There's lots of discounts. Links are in the description below. Let's get back to crafting. Scrolling along on Pinterest, as I am want to do sometimes, I ran across these adorable little faux pies, perfect for tiered trays, and I thought I would give it a go. So I bought these tiny little pie tins and cut out a bunch of muslin, and then I'm just sort of stuffing it and using hot glue. I'm gonna say my fingers did get burned a fair amount in this process, and I did learn how to do it a little bit better, especially at the end 
realizing that I really wanted to push back and give some more air, which made a fluffier pie, if you will, than making sure to leave it flat. And I'm just gonna cut off the rest of it around. You saw those first pair of scissors are not particularly good fabric scissors. And then using about an inch long, an inch wide strip of muslin, I'm just gonna go about every quarter of an inch, adding another little dab of glue and giving it a little ruffle edge. I think this is a little bit of a test of patience and you know how well you are with getting your fingers burned. I probably should have used a lower temperature glue gun. Now here's something you probably don't see very often and that is using alcohol ink to stain your fabric. You could just do a basic tea dye but that isn't exactly what I wanted. I wanted to have a little more control over it. And I happen to own a lot of alcohol ink and find them very functional for many craft projects. So what you see me doing right now is testing a couple of different colors on a strip just to be sure what I like. This is sort of like test dyeing your hair before you do your whole head. Let's get a good idea of what we like before we get started. Using alcohol ink as a dye is really easy. I sell these little mini misters on our website, vintagebedesign.com, and I also sell these little tube squeezers. But if you're really good, you can pour or have a little funnel going in there. Then you're gonna fill that about three quarters of the way up with alcohol, and that's the isopropyl alcohol. And then just add your favorite alcohol inks. Um, depending on how dark you want the dye, is going to be how much alcohol, or excuse me, how much ink you dye. And basically you want it to um, be mostly alcohol. Uh, the more dye you put in there, of course, the darker the dye is going to be on your fabric. I will list in the description below which colors I chose to use on my pie, but I chose four colors overall to give me a good bit of texture and depth. And I do like the look of this, over being able to um, just have tea stained. It is a little bit more work, but I think in the end it creates a prettier project. And you're gonna see on a future project how I use other colors of the alcohol ink to achieve different looks in my crafting projects as well. While the look is really good here, I want to add some additional elements. So I am using some spray adhesive. Um, you could, you, mine is repositionable. It doesn't have to be repositionable, but that's what I happen to have on hand. You're gonna spray it up, um, give it a nice heavy coat. And then for me, I'm going to add some glitter. I buy all of my glitter from Glitter Love and they have some really good ones. Uh, these are the ones that I chose. I'll leave a link in the description below for them but you wanna do this over a plate or a bowl or something so you don't end up with glitter everywhere because, well, you know what happens when you start dealing with glitter. And then I have this super fine glitter that is in a darker brown color and I um, really try to lightly sprinkle this. And to me, this reminds me of the cinnamon, only sparkly, um, on my pie, which works great with the glitter. Uh, these are so fun and I love how they came out. I think they're going to do really well at my fall shows. But of course, no pie would be complete without some little berries on there. So I took a berry candle ring that I happen to have in my stash and cut off some berries and I hot glued them in the center. I did not worry that I had too much hot glue because to me, when I put the berries on there, it just sort of looked like juice or sugar that was melted in that area. It looked very pie-like to me. So I went ahead and didn't worry about that. And I did this to all of the 29 pies that I made. Here is an up close look at my pies. What do you think? Do you think that the alcohol ink spray was worth it? Or do you think I should have just gone with the tea or coffee dyed fabric? I like being able to sort of um, get the fabric to have spots of color versus just the all over color, but um, that is totally a personal preference. For our next project today, this is a deep pullback. I have literally had this wine case on my shelf for years, and I am trying to get through all of this. 
I decided that I wanted to paint the inside of the case as well, but there are staples and other things that are protruding through. So in the end, even painted, it wouldn't be pretty. So I'm gonna go ahead and decoupage the inside to hide a lot of that. And to get a good look with decoupage when your wood is so dark, you do wanna go ahead and give it at least one or two coats of a white or a light color. In this case, I have chosen Fusion. Now, what I didn't think about is the fact that this really wasn't made for painting. And in the end, when I put the decoupage paper on, it did bleed through. So what I should have done is started off with a couple of good spray coats of shellac to keep any bleed through happening. Fusion, while it is an all-in-one, it does not block bleed through. So that is important to know. The outside of the wine case here is all leather. So you can absolutely paint over leather. I've painted leather chairs, lots of other things with Fusion. It is a great, um, a great all-in-one paint that is going to basically stay forever once it has dried and cured. So I am using the same paint that I used on the inside, on the outside here of this, and I'm gonna paint the entire thing um, over all, all of the buckles, all over everything. I will say while this has great coverage, it did require two coats and then it's got a perfect creamy surface. I also wanted to show that while you don't see it very often, you can in fact blend fusion. So I've grabbed some Algonquin for the bottom and we're gonna do a nice simple blend um, from the bottom being Algonquin and the top being Cathedral Taupe. These colors are similar to each other, but you can see there is enough of a difference between them that you'll get a nice blendy look. So you wanna use your a separate brush for each color and then a dry brush. And all I'm doing is swirling the line between the two. You need to do this when your brush is relatively, um, excuse me, when your paint is relatively damp Ideally, you do not want to spray fusion with water. You can, but it is not recommended. At all costs, you do not ever add more than 10% water. But you can see you do get a nice blend line here. Now I'm gonna show you how to decoupage the inside, you know, the easy way. Because this is a really weird shaped box, it's not as simple as cutting a square or rectangle. So what I'm doing is holding the box up on its end and I'm tracing around larger than the size and then I'm gonna cut that out and we will move on to the next part. Now that I have the shape roughly the same as the inside, I wanna check my angles and make sure it fits and then I'm going to trim it appropriately, which should be trimming it down slightly. I'm going to make a copy of this, so a second one, because I'll need one for the top and bottom. And after that, then I'm going to cut them in half because the way this is, um, the box is, there is a top and a bottom half and they are both the same shape. So I wanna go ahead and cut them identical. And you can see I'm folding it in half and then I'm going to cut it. Because this is not a super smooth surface inside, I am choosing to use Redesign with Prima's decoupage gel, and I am using my French tip or pointed sash, the new brushes by uh, DIY Paint. The pointedness on this makes it really easy to get into the corners. And then you see, I simply take my pieces, 
which again are slightly larger than they need to be, fitting it nicely into the corner and I will have some overhang. Uh, we will do the inside and that will cover up any extra we have on the interior. But I do need to account for the fact that it is a little bit lumpy and bumpy because again, I do have nails and things like that that are coming in. They're not sharp, but they're not flat on the inside. It's like somebody nailed the brads in and then bent them over on the inside of the box. And I'm just kind of trying to hide that. The reason I've chosen this decoupage medium over say liquid patina, which is often my go-to, is because this is much thicker, which means when the surface isn't flat, when it's gonna try to pull up a little bit, this is a much heavier resistance and will do a better job of holding on to the paper, especially in the areas where it has to go over something bumpy. While those ends are drying, let's go ahead and cut our paper for the inside. And again, yes, you could just try to shove it in there and shove it up against the ends, but you're gonna make it a lot more work than it needs to be. So think about this like you are wrapping a present, um, only you don't need all of the extra area to fold, right? I am simply laying it out and getting the rough width and length, and then I'm going to cut out a rectangle and we will trim it from there. But this way I don't have all of that excess paper to deal with trying to um, figure out the cuts inside of the box. When you trim it down, it just makes it easier overall. And I haven't mentioned, but I am using one of JRV's damask papers. I really love this light green. I think it is just a beautiful sort of wallpaper look for the inside. And I'm cutting this roughly in half because I have a right and a left side of the box. Pushing it down into the very center of that surface and, and making it align on one side, I'm able to see how much I need to trim up. And I'm just sort of making a rough line and I'm gonna translate that and pull it out and trim it appropriately. And then I'm gonna take that same mark and roughly trim the other piece of paper so they are approximately the same size. We will repeat the exact same step starting again at the center of the well and working our way out. We've left a little bit of extra length, not tons, but a little bit of extra length on the right and left so that it will stick out just a little bit, but our um, top and bottom, if you will, should be fairly precise. And then we're just gonna smooth it out with our fingertips. You could use a spatula or um, a squeegee to try to flatten it out. But again, I have nails and things in my way. So I am just trying to use my fingers as much as possible to flatten it. Give it a couple minutes to dry more or less. And then I will use the decoupage medium over the top of it as well for a nice solid coat. But you see, when you start trimming it off early on, instead of trying to do it all from inside the box, if you use the outside measurements, to work your inside measurements, it is a much easier process to trim your decoupage paper and get it to fit where you want it to. While the inside is drawing, I'm going to go ahead and add some um, transfers that I have. I actually found in my scraps that I had several wine related ones. Um, I believe they are actually from the wine mini transfer by Redesign with Prima and I'm putting some on the front, back, and the sides. I'm not going overboard, but I do really like the way these works. I will love to hear your opinion. Because you know me, I can never end right there. I still need to add a little bit more dimension. So I have grabbed the DIY in dark wax, and I'm just putting some right along these edges, creating a nice shadow, wiping it off with a clean, dry cloth, if this is heavier than you like, you can always use clear wax as an eraser. I did not put clear wax on before putting the dark wax on because this paint has a built-in sealer. So I knew it wasn't gonna really um, stick to the paint already crazy good. But if you are concerned about it getting too dark, that is always an option or you could use it afterwards as an eraser, but it is more effective if you add it first. 
And final step, I promise, since we made this a little bit grungy and I did distress it with some 220 grit sandpaper, I am now just on the metal bit going to add a little bit of Dixie Belle's copper gilding. And I think it is the perfect look to finish off this piece. It adds a little bit of elegance right back into it. I also found, because remember I said that it was bleeding through, that I could, with a brush, use that same copper gilding on the inside, and I'm just sort of, I guess I'm giving it a high-end grunge since I'm using a metallic copper instead of like a brown wax or a dark wax, but basically where I saw that it was really yellowing, I just sort of feathered my brush up and down with a little bit of that gilding wax, making it think and remind me of old French wallpaper in an old chateau, something like that, where it had been distressed and maybe it had water damage or something that caused streak marks to run down the wall. In the end, I'm super pleased. I really like how this came out. I might have to try it on a piece of furniture. Tell me what you think about this wine case. It certainly feels a lot more modern than that dark, oppressive brown leather that felt a little too 1990s boho Tuscany. Uh, I really like the look and it seems like the perfect gift now if you wanted to throw a bottle of wine in with it. I have been staring at these little spindles across the table for at least two weeks now trying to figure out what I was going to make with them. They look like little chess pieces to me. I decided finally I knew what it was going to be and I'm super excited at how this project came out. And I've had for me, these little it's my wooden favorite blocks project of the week and my stash by a I'm going to say shot. for probably a year I and a half. I felt two like years, I didn't really there need was to a project paint these. I really so wanted I to do with them to never add got around some to it. Wax, and now it's by not DIY really a trend anymore. And so I decided them to paint them. I mean, some of them I did scuff sand a little bit because mineral paint this paint that is an all in one. It wasn't taking the wax very well, but really mostly is a little bit of a creamy white. And I'm only painting the four surfaces around the block, leaving the top and the bottom raw. Now that these are done, I wish I'd wait, made a lot more. I had plenty of spindles to do more, but I only made six. I am basically gonna do the same thing that I did with the little pies here. And I'm gonna take this fabric stripe. It is a little bit wider. I'm gonna say it's probably about an inch and a half. You really could have it tapered or um, you can have it straight. I was just using scraps that I cut down a little bit and they tore at a little bit of an angle. So it is sort of getting smaller as you go because the original cut wasn't exactly on the, the straight bias, I guess. So I'm just spinning it around and doing the exact same thing. But instead of stopping at the end, I'm gonna continue the ruffle in a circle. To end it off, I am just adding a little bit of glue in the center, and then I'm adding a 20 millimeter half bead in sort of a pool of hot glue, and I'm not worried about there being a lot of overage. Now I have mixed up some more of my alcohol ink in the little spritzers, and I will leave um, uh, all of the colors in the description below, but basically I am painting these and some spritzes on the spindle. I'm not too worried about it. But I love the Peace Rose. It is one of my favorite flowers. And so I'm sort of doing these a little bit like a Peace Rose. Some will be just more yellow, some will be a little more pink, but ultimately they are all um, sort of in the idea of the Peace Rose. Now I'm gonna make some little tiny rosettes. And basically you do this by spinning your muslin and um, you're going to spin it around a circle sort of around a pivot point while you were um, actually spinning the um, the muslin in a spiral pattern as well it's sort of like you're going in a circle with a spun if you think about spinning wool you're sort of spinning that into a circle um, from a flat piece and then spinning that tightly around in a circular pattern using the hot glue to hold it in place. Again, I would recommend that you use glue, a hot glue gun that is less hot, maybe a low temp glue gun for a rosette. This was very hard on the fingers using this high temp, very hot glue gun. So you will continue that until you have the size you want 
and then flip it upside down and just sort of hot glue the last little bit of fabric underneath and you have a charming little floral rosette. Next up, we're gonna make some bumblebees and I'm gonna tell you the right way to do this and the wrong way to do this because I did it wrong at first. So we're gonna be stuffing some little pieces of fabric through the bead hole. So I have strung these beads on a paintbrush just to help me paint them easier. It's easier than trying to hold them with your fingers if you're sort of chubby like mine. And I am using DIY Paints Gold Gilding Wax and putting little stripes on it. You do not want to do a stripe around the bead. You wanna do it from hole to hole. If you go around the circumference of the bead, then it'll be like the wings were coming out of its head and that's not right. You want the wings to come from side to side. So be sure that you are going, your stripe is gonna go from hole to hole. You'll probably get about five stripes in there um, for the size of the bead that I made. Uh, and I will also say you'll wanna let these dry a fair amount because you're gonna be touching them with your fingers and they're gonna get pretty well distressed. Also wanna know with my rosettes, if you can see them there, I used the alcohol ink technique to dye them some are pink and some are yellow. Also, I did not show me cutting up the wire. I forgot to record it for some reason, but basically you're gonna take a strip of wire, probably about eight inches long, and you're gonna um, push it through the bead and give it a bit of a twist with some needle nose pliers and just sort of twist it in a swirly pattern. You'll see in the final results, you'll get the idea. They're really easy to do. Here are the final flowers. I used a stamp to stamp Be Kind on each of these, and you can see that the wire is in the base, and they are just as cute as can be. They look cute from just about every angle. I completely love them. I can't wait to hear what you have to say. I feel like that was a lot of crafting this week. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I do. Please be sure to leave a comment, hit like, and subscribe.